you go out on the street, what do you see? You see people always on their phone. Everyone is on their phone. People walking on their smartphone and people driving on their phone. They're texting and driving, they're watching a video, or looking at a meme. I mean, this is happening all the time, and that's a big issue because human error is actually the biggest reason for traffic accidents, 90% actually. So that 90% adds up and that causes a lot of issues and we want to get rid of these issues. What did we do in the past with human errors? We automated it. We got rid of the issues by automation. So we can actually do the same thing with cars, with traffic, and that is using fully autonomous cars. And you've heard a lot of articles about this, but they're going to come here, they're here, but there are a lot of issues. So I'm going to go over some of these issues. I classify them into three classes. The first class is technology. Artificial intelligence is one of the biggest issues in this. I know whenever I say artificial intelligence, I hear a big gasp and everyone says, the Terminator and we're going to all die. <laughs> That's not happening anytime soon. So just to summarize what, <laughs> it's going to happen, but not, yeah. <laughs> artificial intelligence or AI is very simple. We have a set of data and we put it into the machine and it gives us the results. So an example is we say a fruit is red, round, and that's an apple. And we put that into the machine and next time when it sees an apple, it detects that that's an apple. Very simple, we just put data sets into it. So for us to have better machines, we need to have better data sets. So if you want to have better driverless cars that, has, that could do and react in any situation, we need to have better data sets that has faced any previous problems. The other problem with technology that we're facing is always changing weather and environment. So right now we could have driverless cars possibly in rural areas, but we don't have driverless cars in urban areas or in a place like Chicago where it snows. So how does the car detect the surroundings? Well, there are possible ways to detect this. There are by putting more radars, by putting more sensors onto the cars. You have the option on partially autonomous cars right now to put these um, technologies, but it is not, it's not required. But if you want to have technology that actually uses all these, we need to require it. So cost efficiency is a big problem that we're facing because we want it to be user friendly and everyone to buy the cars and prefer it to normal cars. The second class of problems that we're facing is government. So we need government's interference into driverless cars. The best example is infrastructure. So if you're on the street, you don't want to be on the same street as a driverless car and a normal car to be on the street because that actually is a problem. The driverless car could be confused because it doesn't have a good reaction time. So we need to have and repurpose the streets. So that's one of the problems with government. The other issue is legislation and insurance. So we need to know which side of the problem is guilty. So if a driverless car actually gets into an accident by any reason, for, because of any reason, then there must be, someone must be guilty, either the owner of the car or the driverless car company. So it's one or the other, but there are no legislations for this. There are no rules setting and telling people, hey, this person is the one responsible for this. So we need to have this kind of insurance and government cooperation in this. And the other one is regulations. So by regulations, what I mean is cybersecurity has always been an issue. And when you have a cyber attack on a computer, you, use, you lose your personal information and very minor things. But if you have a cyber attack on cars, people will lose lives. So it's a big issue that people actually understand that we need regulations on this. So uh, government needs to put on certificates and standards on this so people actually could rely on their cars without being scared that they might lose their life because of cyber attack. And the third class of problems, and in my opinion, the most important one is ethical. So ethics and decision-making is important because programmers actually 
write down their programs and they're done with it. So they write down the algorithm and that is the uh, end of the solution in uh, most of the cases. But not with driverless cars. We need to have right method, and by that I mean moral principles set and embedded into algorithms. And you're in a car and it's going towards the, uh, it's on the street and it's going towards a bus. And the bus actually crashes into you. So what you want is the car to react in a way that either saves you or saves 30 children. So you don't really want to be in a car that will put your life in danger, and you don't want to be in a car that actually kills 30 children. So you need to be able to make moral pr principles before you roll out fully autonomous cars. So there are all these problems, and there's a market that is actually facing problems. So in the past, in technology, there's always, uh, there's always been competition, I mean, with Mac and PC, with Android and iPhone, and that actually is not good for users in some ways. So what people uh, think is going to be different is we've entered a different era of technology. So in the year 2011, 35% of American market owned smartphones. So 35% of people own smartphones. And right now, it's more than 80%. In six years, full of patent wars, that number has more than doubled. So the difference with driverless cars is actually uh, car companies don't want it to happen. So the leading autonomous car company, Tesla, actually put all their patents public. So what that means is they don't want a competition because that will not be good for users. That will put, pe put this technology behind. So what they're trying to do is actually tech companies working together and cooperating and moving this technology in a faster pace. So when is it going to happen? Well, there are uh, different dates for different companies, by, but by year 2021 to 24, there are all these different companies, Apple, Tesla, uh, that they will roll out fully autonomous cars. But uh, by year 2030, more than 50% of the cars on highways, on American highways, will be driverless. So I recommend that if you're going to be buying a car by year 2030, that you buy a driverless car. <laughs> Thank you.